George VI became king unexpectedly after his older brother gave up the throne. We only have two movies that tell his story. Let's take a look. Starting with the basics in order of release. Birdie and Elizabeth was made in 2002, is 98 minutes long, rated 13 plus. The King's Speech was made in 2010, is 119 minutes long, rated 17 plus. Birdie and Elizabeth. This begins when King George VI, or as his family called him, Birdie, is still the Duke of York and meets his future wife, Elizabeth. It ends with Bertie's death. Script. This is a telling of the life of Bertie and his wife, Elizabeth. It covers, I would say, most of all the big events of their lives, their courtship and marriage, the birth of their first daughter, Elizabeth, Edward VIII's relationship with Wallace Simpson, the stress of the abdication, World War II, and so on. Yes, it covers a lot and always through the point of view of Bertie and Elizabeth together. Even so, I'm happy to say it didn't feel rushed. It flowed very well. I never got bored or disinterested. This is really more about their reactions to what's happening around them as opposed to any internal struggles. Acting. Bertie is played by James Wilby, who I thought was very cute in the beginning, and then did a great job of showing growth, both in age and learning as a king. Interestingly, they really played down the stutter compared to other versions of him I've seen. There are a few scenes of him with his speech therapist, but it's certainly not a focus. I thought Juliet Aubrey as Elizabeth was also very good. Her caring demeanor and soothing voice is so naturally calming. I really enjoyed her performance. The rest of the cast was also good, but none of them really stood out to me. Except for those of you who have already watched The Crown, Eileen Atkins plays the role of Queen Mary in this as well, and she's fantastic. Production design and costuming. I don't think this was a particularly big budget film since it was made for TV, but it still had excellent production value. Nothing about it caught my eye and made me go, ooh, wow, that's so pretty. However, I can't say anything stood out to me as lacking either. Effort was definitely put into making the costumes historically accurate. Sex and nudity, violence and gore. No sex or nudity. It does show some bombing during World War II, but nothing graphic. Now let's look at the King's Speech. The movie begins when Bertie is already married to Elizabeth and he's still the Duke of York. It ends right as World War II begins. Script. This movie addresses, or at least mentions, a lot of the same things as our last option, but it's primarily about Bertie's relationship with his speech therapist, Lionel. The movie digs deeper into Bertie's insecurities and fears and how Lionel and his wife support him through it. There are appearances by Edward VIII, Wallace Simpson, and other members of the royal family, but the center focus is Bertie and Lionel. Acting. It really doesn't get much better than this. Colin Firth as Bertie is amazing. He won an Academy Award and a Golden Globe Award. Queen Elizabeth was played by the also crazy talented Helena Bonham Carter. And then Jeffrey Rush as Lionel Logue. I haven't even started in on the supporting cast and they are worthy of note as well. If you haven't seen this yet, you are missing out. I recommend you go now. Production Design and Costuming. Here we have a big budget film, and it shows. Oh my gosh, the wide shots of inside the palaces and Westminster Abbey, the attention to color, and even the ceilings. Everything about this movie is stunning. Sex and nudity, violence and gore. No sex or nudity, and no violence or gore. But there is a lot of profanity. I would not let the kids in the room for this one. Final opinion. I think you should definitely watch both. However, if you only want to watch one, Bertie and Elizabeth is the way to go if you are more interested in the history of this time period and watching important events happen, both from a royal and political perspective. The King's Speech is your go-to if you're more interested in George VI as a person, watching his very human struggle, and overall just want to watch, in my opinion, the better of the two movies. That's it. Thank you and happy watching.